Um, this is going to be, it's a lightning talk, uh, so it's going to be rather quick. Uh, who am I? Uh, those of you who didn't see me earlier, um, yeah, I'm a software developer by day. I jokingly am a hardware hacker by night, and it appears sometimes I speak at, K at B sites. Um, this isn't my day job. Uh, why did I write is? But anyway. Okay, so <coughs> why are we actually talking about implants? Um, for those of you who've avoided the news, and in particular Twitter, you may not have seen uh, that. So what this was was a Bloomberg write-up. Uh, they claimed that uh, super micro motherboards had been backdoored with a hardware implant. Um, the idea being that uh, the story goes that it was the Chinese, um, some subcontractor to a subcontractor to a subcontractor of Supermicro. Um, so what they were doing, the story goes anyway, is uh, they were actually taking the boards um, when they were being manufactured, they were making some changes and they were putting a component. Um, it's very vague as to who was doing what and why and how, but supposedly there was a component on there and suddenly these boards found their ways into servers, which found their ways into, the story goes, Amazon and Apple and all this kind of stuff, and gave the Chinese access to servers. Um, now, everything was very vague. No one knew anything. Um, and everyone went, uh, maybe? I don't know. Kind of? Sort of? A little while later, I think it was a week later or so, Bloomberg came out with a new version of it, um, which was that someone else said, no, 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 hang on. The story wasn't quite right. They um, modified the network sockets themselves and put something in there, and that was intercepting traffic. And that then was a backdoor into the servers and et cetera, et cetera. And this sort of story kind of blew up with, um, depending on which side you were on, if you made money in hardware security and that kind of thing, then obviously the, everything was true. Um, and if you had no real interest in any of that, well, hang on, this is all fake. So the, there were Twitter wars erupted over this and very, every, everyone was angrily tweeting at everyone else as they usually do. So what is a hardware implant? So a uh, hardware implant in these cases most of the time is essentially just something that you stick onto the hardware, a piece of hardware that allows you to either exfiltrate your data out of the system through a non-normal means or to override some part of the system. It allows you a backdoor that, you, that isn't in software, often without the software even knowing that backdoor exists. Um, a silly example of this is just like a mod chip on a games console. Um, that is essentially a hardware implant, although you're not stealing any secrets out of the machine or anything like that. A lot of people seem to think this was new, but hardware implants aren't. In the 1970s, um, the Soviets put a, what back then was called a bug into typewriters, which allowed them to actually transmit everything was typed on um, the US diplomats typewriters to a little van outside the embassy where they proceeded to capture all the information. Um, if you go back through various sites, there's a bunch of them where they'll list all these kinds of things. This kind of stuff's been done for years. The catch is, is that you did it for a small number of devices. It was one country, you know, 20 typewriters, 100 typewriters in this office or that kind of thing. And then of course, a certain three letter government agency went and accidentally left a few details on the internet or somewhere, and this was leaked. Um, if you want an interesting read, you can go and Google, you'll find the PDF for this. This is the NSA Ant Catalog. Um, there's a few versions of it and a few other leaked ones. This is an amazing read of absolutely crazy little hardware devices that all allow you um, remote access to things, stream data out of weird high-speed Wi-Fi links and radio links, um, bypass all kinds of protection and encryption and other things. It's a very entertaining read. The crazy thing is that this catalog suddenly showed people what you could do if money was no object. You could make things much smaller than people thought you could. Up until uh, this kind of thing leaked, everyone always said the argument was it costs too much. We can't have something custom built that small to put into a device. So back to the how does all this work? So on the Bloomberg story, this photo without the tags was actually in the, the thing. Um, 
Hector Martin, he's one of the guys. He's famous for um, being a part of, I think it's Fail, no, not Fail Overflow, um, the guys who hacked the PlayStation. Um, but basically, the uh, you'll find there's a couple of this photo around. What it is is, um, if you looked at the photos and what Bloomberg were talking about, was there was a little chip, the supposed implant there, a little six-pin thing that was stuck on a board. The theory that uh, various security researchers came to was that if this was actually true, what that little chip was doing was sitting in between a, a flash chip, which had storage, and this big chip here, which is the BMC, which is um, the board management controller, which if you do anything with servers, um, uh, it's also referred to often as lights out management. Basically, it's the... Um, control of the server environment with, when, without the CPU knowing. So through that, you can turn things on and off and power things and monitor things, temperatures and all this kind of stuff. Um, if you go and look, uh, this is otherwise known as sort of like the Swiss cheese of the networking community. Um, I can't remember how many vulnerabilities they found in the various versions of this, but I know I had to scroll quite a bit on the page. Um, it runs, at, depending on which board you've got, it's got a 2.2 on some of them version Linux kernel with almost no patches applied. Um, the story, the idea being that, oh, it's, it's closed. No one goes and pokes around in that, it's fine. The interesting thing is, is the BMC is plugged onto the various buses on your motherboard. So it's got access to um, the network controllers. It doesn't have direct access to your CPU or your RAM or stuff like that, but it can do interesting things to various bits of hardware. So the Bloomberg story was, okay, some guys in China went and put a new chip on, they modified the board layout, had a space specifically made for this chip, and we plonked this little chip on there. Now, the problem with that is um, that's actually easy to spot. Uh, if you modify the boards, you uh, will spot it during... Um, sort of like a visual inspection. A lot of these companies actually have automated visual inspection. They x-ray a board, they load the x-ray into a system and compares the image against the original and says, there's a new parcher, who put that there? So the correct way of doing this would be just to swap out something like the flash chip with your own custom flash chip. Now, if you've bought anything from China for cheap, you will have seen this happen time and time again. So what happens in China is, you will get a chip. It says uh, ST micro on the outside, and it's got a number on it, and it should be that chip, but it behaves just slightly differently. The reason for that is it's not an ST micro chip. It's someone else's chip that they kind of this close, stuck it in the same holder, lasered the logo on the outside, and it gets shipped. Now, you could do the exact same thing for this. You could have a flash chip pretending to be a flash chip, and it's not a flash chip. Um, so like I say, uh, if you go and read, there's some very, very interesting um, articles about this. Um, Hector's written a bunch of stuff. There's a, a few other people who've tweeted in that. Um, some of the back doors are insane. We were chatting about it earlier in the badge room because people have suddenly discovered that the VGA connector is hooked up to the same bus that your network adapter runs on and your RAM runs on and your keyboard controller runs on. And so what you can do is you can plug a VGA cable in, talk to the I2C bus, tell the bus to do something fancy to the network, oh, and inject these key presses on the keyboard controller, and, 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 and. Um, luckily, it's only on certain motherboards um, or certain laptops and that kind of thing. But like I say, um, what happens is when these machines are built, the guys, they build them out so quickly and they forget to wire everything else. So you don't really need a back door. Um, just change the flash, put something in. Uh, the story goes that uh, people who've looked at this particular implant say what it's probably doing is just switching out the flash at certain times and boots a totally different flash to the controller. You don't know it's doing that. So how do you fix this? Um, the big problem isn't its supply chain. It's where is your machine hardware being built? If your hardware is being built outside of your control, you can't do anything about it. The problem is, is that when you move the manufacturing back to America, which is the current orange president is planning to do, um, it doesn't help because although the manufacturing is happening in, chi in, in America now, all of your chips come from China. So, okay, we move the chip manufacturer back and then eventually you end up with all the manufacturing there. And even then, 
you still can't trust it. The components arrive on a reel. Um, it wouldn't be hard to pay one employee to switch out one reel, and now you've got a bro a another thing in your device. You can encrypt everything. You can do uh, hardware encryption stuff. But again, it's you can't talk to every chip on every device and authenticate every single transaction. Now, this is becoming a, a bigger and bigger problem. You'll see um, if you deal with uh, US companies, uh, especially government and that, the government goes, ah, hang on, these manufacturers, we don't want any of these product, uh, products in our systems because they may or may not have a backdoor. We're not quite sure, but like, you know, our, our three letter agencies told us just avoid these guys. Um, when I was saying about uh, changing it, these are two parts. They look identical. Um, on the right is a standard XOR quad uh, gate. On the left is an AT Tiny 84. Uh, those of you who know electronics will know that's a microcontroller. It runs code. The cool thing is you won't be able to tell the difference if you just change the lettering on the outside between those two chips. And you can make the left one do everything the right one does. So like I say, um, you know, how do you stop that kind of thing? My favorite quote, though, was mine. So everyone's going on about the fact that these backdoors are going to be, you know, serious problems, security risk, et cetera. But like I say, is often the hardware implants don't have access to the RAM and stuff like that. So you can't get data necessarily out and that kind of thing. So my argument is, who cares about getting data out? Let's just say that a third of some big cloud provider's equipment has got my hardware implant in. And let's just say that all it can do is write to various flash chips on the board. That's it. And it happens to be able to see network traffic. Well, then why can't I put some my special thing in there, write zeros to everything when it sees a certain thing, and shut down an entire cloud provider? Now, um, if you think about it, that's, it's not particularly, it wouldn't be particularly hard. It's a once-off I nuke the US, and that's about it. I can only use this thing once, but you only have to use it once. So yeah, that's it. No. Okay, I think we. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. Like I say, th th there's, a <sighs> there's a rabbit hole that, um, so the only reason I'm doing this is because I got sucked into the rabbit hole of reading these things. Um, there's a group of people, um, Hector, and there's a few others, uh, Sutherland, he did a talk, and there's a few other guys, security people who do some hardware stuff, and Basically, if you get onto Twitter and you start looking, and you'll just see them, they'll, they'll mention talks. And at one point, I queued up, I think it was 12 hours of just hardware security talks like this. Um, and that was just scratching the surface. Um, the, the problem with the hardware security is you don't see it. You can't test for it. It's not the normal kind of thing. Um, and people always ignore the hardware. It's like, oh, no, 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 we don't have to worry about that. Um, but like I say, Everything runs on top of these things. They are all closed. Um, there's no code you can poke at, it's sort of publicly available. Um, so yeah. Any other questions?